want to. Testing one, two. I've learned about praise is not necessarily how you feel, it's just who you become. That the praise is not always about me, but it's about also lifting someone else. So that my praise has an effect on someone else's praise. That how many know that we are in the company of situations? We are in a company of circumstances. But when we praise, them circumstances have to sit down and they have to bow down. So we ought to give God some praise so that, guess what? God gets the glory over our circumstances and over our situation that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to the Baptist Temple experience. I want to welcome those that are on live stream. Amen. We come together collectively to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And at this time, we're going to turn this over to our worship team so we can worship them through song. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord with me. He is worthy of our praise. Psalms 150 says that everything has, that has breath, praise ye the Lord. And you woke up this morning, I woke up this morning, so let's praise the Lord. Let's sing the praises unto the Lord, amen. Give 
And I don't know if anybody understands that when you hail, that means you bow down. All hail King Jesus. I, I bow down. I, I yield, Lord God. Thank you for what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for everything you've done for me. What you put me through. I praise you. Forever and ever. Hallelujah. Forever and ever. Give us a reason to clap our hands and shout hallelujah because you reign forever. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we will have our announcements by Trustee Darty Scott. Amen. Then we're going to have a hymn, Blessed Quietness. Amen. And then we're going to have scripture by Deaconess Daisy Threadgill. Praise God. Welcome our guest, Reverend Demetrius, and, yeah. Reverend Demetrius and Deaconess Miller. I don't want to say your name wrong, I'm sorry. So I'm going to stick with Deaconess Miller from Holy Cross Baptist Church in Philadelphia. We are so glad yeah. you could join us today. We thank God for you being here. Wednesday night Bible study is 7 p.m. via conference call. Dollar number is in your bulletin. Um, just remember to please join in and please, 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 please. Please, mute yourselves. And I know the reason why I say that, I know sometimes people think that they mute, but the only suggestion I can give you is that when you come on, to put your phone on mute. Yeah. If you want to do the star six, you'll forget the star six and go back and forth. But just hit the mute on your own phone so we can just enjoy the lesson, what God is trying to um, teach us and what the, um, uh, the reverends have prepared for us. And so less distraction. So please just mute your phones. Amen? Amen. Every weekday at 7 a.m. Inspire, a morning devotional prayer and conference call. Again, that's every morning at 7 a.m. Just come in, mute yourselves, and enjoy what the Inspire inspiration for the day is. Amen. The youth ministry is now preparing for the annual Thanksgiving food drive. They are asking for, for donations of non-perishable items. They can be placed in the fellowship hall. The deadline is November the 13th. If you know of any families in need, submit their names to Deacon Tina McClendon or myself by November the 15th. Amen. Amen. We want to be a blessing, so we ask you please submit the names as soon as possible. BTC Women, you are invited to participate in a three-day Women's Emphasis Weekend. The theme is, We Are the Bride of Christ. Mm. On Friday, November the 11th at 6.30 p.m., there will be a service, Green Grove at Baptist Temple. There will be a culinary grab-and-go dinner afterwards. Register to win the Bridal Blessing $50 gift card. On Saturday, November the 12th, the BTC Drama Troupe will perform at the Eleanor Corbett Women's Shelter, the time to be determined. Amen. On Sunday, November the 13th at BTC, we are the Bride of Christ Vow Renewal Ceremony. This will be during the morning service. Come out, ladies, and renew your commitment to our Lord. The colors are from white to tan. And again, there's more information ladies, that we um, met about last week and that you will, people will be in touch with you to know. If you have any questions, please see uh, First Lady Williams. Amen. Pretty in Pink will be on next Sunday, November the 6th. Amen. 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 November the 6th, after morning service from 12 noon to 2 p.m., this is ministry headed by Sister Michelle Vaughn. And you just come out and support the breast cancer um, survivors on next Sunday afternoon. Amen. Save the date. The Bowling and Pool Fellowship has been rescheduled to Saturday, November the 19th at 6 p.m. There's an online sign-up sheet. For additional information, see Deaconess Muriel Jackson. The Bible reading ministry is looking for any member who is willing to read your scripture, excuse me, read, read scripture during our morning Sunday morning service. Please see Deaconess Tina McClendon. Our sick and shut in. Deaconess Deborah Brown, Sister Deborah Jones, Sister Brenda McDaniel, Sister Hasna Thornton, Deaconess Barbara Cherubin, Sister Angel Knight, Sister Diane Robinson, and Sister Ethel Walker. And please keep all our sick and shut in that are on here and those that we don't know. And we have a card. 
Bless your heart for all the ways you find to be so nice. Bless your hands for giving help without even thinking twice. Bless your thoughts for knowing just the perfect thing to do. You're a gift of love and faith, and I'm truly blessed by you. Dear Baptist Temple, the amount of love and support given to me and my family during our time of need will never not be rem will always be remembered and appreciated. We look back on now, we look back on how we were able to weather our storm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. Your hospitality, your prayers, and kind words are so deeply cherished, and I have never been happier to say that I belong to such a loving church home. And this is from Love to Mary Hawkins. She lost her father a couple weeks ago, and as she continued to keep her in her prayers, um, I had to stop by her house this morning to pick up the card because she's um, her son and her are both sick, so please keep them in your prayers. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> also, the service for Sister Vanessa Jones, who is the sister of Bernice Layton, um, she's in service today. Please keep her in prayer. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. funeral is on Wednesday, November the 2nd at 12 p.m. The viewing is from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I continue to keep um, Bernice and her family in your prayers. Amen. Um, and this little lady, um, her mother, <laughs> wanted to, she told me to shout her out, but Miss Milana will be seven years old tomorrow. Woo! Amen. Minister Schultz will be 60 tomorrow. Amen. Now, I don't know if I was going to say the age or not, but I already did now, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> and, um, well, we have two, um, and there were some more brothers and sisters. Vanessa's birthday was October the 28th. Um, Deaconess, Deaconess Barbara's birthday was last Sunday. Amen. Deaconess Charmaine Barber. Now, I'm sorry if I omitted any other birthdays in October. These are the only ones I was told of, but we ha happy birthday to you all. But we have two ladies here that are little, this, they're all special to us. But these two young ladies, on uh, one birthday was um, Sister Maisie Horsey, birthday. And if you could come to the front, Sister Maisie, please. If you can come to the front, Sister Maisie, come on up. Sister Maisie's birthday was October the 13th. And Sister Carrie Miller's birthday was October the 28th. And if they could both come up front. We just wanted to show these young ladies some extra love here. We have some beautiful flowers for them. They have, they come faithfully, they are committed, and we just truly love you both, and we wanted you both to know that. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Now, you know, as you know, Sister Miller has been an usher for... over 40 years, and Sister, amen, and Sister Maisie was a member of the Gospel Chorus for over 40 years, over 40 years, <laughs> amen, we, yeah, you want to say something, you want to say anything, <laughs> you want to say something? Amen, amen, amen. We glad you're here. Huh? Amen. They both are glad to be here. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Yes. Um, with um, just a thought and I really didn't have anything but I experienced something the other day um, a friend of mine um, her daughter she was able to take her daughter to um, Florida on a make-a-wish foundation and um, her daughter um, is not verbal and so she sent me a little clip so I'm gonna try to tell you without crying but 
the clip was that she saw the parade at Magic Kingdom. And even though um, she wasn't able to speak, if you had saw her eyes and her expression, and I was just thinking to myself, I got convicted, like when I thank God, do I really give him that awesome expression of thankfulness, of gratefulness, of blessing me? This young lady can't talk. But when you, I'm telling you, if you had saw her eyes, she was lit up. And then I talked to her, and I said, did you enjoy Magic Kingdom? What else better could you say than that? So I'm just saying to you, or maybe to me, that even when you don't feel like talking to him, you don't feel like praying to him, because we all get like that. Say, if you could just give him your expression. Because you have the ability to talk. You have the ability to wave your hand. You have the ability to walk together. Just give him some thanks. We're going through a lot, but he's taking us all the way through. So when you have something to thank God for, just look up to him. So I'll be good. It quietness. Sometimes you just need to be alone in quietness with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, if I can ask everyone to stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. Give it all honor and glory to our Lord and Savior. To the pulpit, to the congregation. I will be reading for your hearing and doing, Psalm, Psalm 103, 
1 to 26. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he's done, he does for me. He forgives me of all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as from as far as from us as from east to from the west the lord is like a father to his children tender and compassionate to those who fear him he for he knows how weak we are he remembers we are only dust our days on this earth are like grass like wildflowers we bloom and we die the wind blows and we are gone and as though we had never been here but the lord of but the, Lord, but the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children, of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne, and there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, Praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything has that, that he has created, everything in all of his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. We see in this passenger of scripture that David had a heart for God, for the Lord. He said, I, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart, with everything that's within me. Even today, we can have that same attitude. We can praise the Lord for something that he has done for us. And we know it's nothing but the Lord that did it. So let us praise the Lord with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our soul. He is worthy. God is still a good God. And his love is steadfast forever. So I praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I thank Amen. God today for all that he has done for Amen. me. I can praise see through God. the scripture that what he is doing for me each and every day. So I praise God with all my heart, with my whole heart. I am not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ. He is a good God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 And at this time, we'll have prayer. If I can ask uh, Deacon McNeil, amen, to pray for us. Amen. Let us look to the Lord, most gracious and everlasting Father. Once again, you allowed your servant to call upon your name one more time. Father, before I go any further, Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us to see another day that we have never seen before. Waking us up with new health and new strength. Waking us up with new grace and new mercy. Father, we just thank you because when we did not know what was going on last night in our home, Father, you watched over us, Father. And Father, you touched us this morning with your love and tender kindness. For that, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you have been so good to us, Father, been better to us than we've been to ourselves. If we look around and see right now, Father, we see the love that we have for one another, even right now, Father, we just want to just say thank you, Lord. Father, you guided us over the dangerous streets and highways through scenes and unseen dangers to get here just one more time, Father. Father, I pray and ask even right now that you just forgive us of our many sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we just thank you, Lord, because you met us at the door this morning, Father. Father, I just want to just say, Father, I just want to thank you for it because you have brought us, Father, here with a song on our heart, a prayer on our lips, and a song and a praise in our faces, Father. I pray even right now, Father, that you would just bless us even right now 
just sit back, Father, and receive your word, Father. Let us not worry about what's going on to our right or to our left, but let us focus on the word this morning, Father. Father, I pray right now that you would just bless us, Father, to receive your word, Father, that it is given this morning. Then, Father, I'm praying that you would just bless the preacher this morning, Father. Father, as he opens his mouth, Father, let your word pour out for him. And, Father, that's going to bless us, Father, this morning. Father, I pray right now that you are anointed from the top of his head to the very soles of his feet. Father, I pray even right now that you would just bless the choir this morning. Bless the congregation this morning, Father. Father, I'm praying that you would just bless us all to get on one accord, Father. Because you said, if you be lifted up, that you draw all men unto you, Father. So I'm praying even right now that you would just draw us just a little bit closer to you this morning, Father. Because I realize without you, Father, that we are nothing, Father. And Father, I pray even right now, Father, that you would just continue, Father, to touch us from our head to the very soles of our feet. Touch us from heart to heart, from breast to breast this morning, Father. Bless those who have a desire to be here but could not, Father. And Father, I'm praying this morning for those who would say, Who is God that I must serve him, Father? Father, we know you as Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Father, we're just praying right now, Father, that you would just let your presence be felt, even right now in Baptist Temple. Father, I'm praying that we will take your word out, my Father, to the streets and to the highways to let people know that you are still alive today, Father. You are still waiting to receive them, Father, unto yourself. I pray even right now that one will come forth, Father, and say, what must I do to be saved? Reveal to the hearts and minds for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Father, we honor you, we glory you, and we give you all the praise by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, for your will. Thank you for your way, and thank you for your presence that's in our lives even right now. We give you all the glory, and all the honor, and all the praise, and all these blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Our hearts and souls and minds says, Amen. Deaconess Threadgill for that scripture, that the passion that she put into reading the scriptures. Amen. I want to thank Deacon McNeil for that heartfelt prayer. But at this time, it's preaching time. Amen. This is what we gather together for. Amen. But before I get to introducing the preacher, I do have an announcement to make. Sister Williams would like to meet with all the women of Baptist Temple after church, all right? All the women of Baptist Temple after church, amen. But what can I say about this preacher that we have in the pulpit today, amen? Amen. I've known him for over a decade, amen, and he's a friend of mine. Um, I, I know he's been called. I've heard him preach. I, I've heard him teach the word of God, and he has a bio. If you want to take time to read the bio, it's interesting. Amen. It's very interesting. Amen. But that's not the prevalent point. The prevalent point is this man is saved. Yeah. And this man has been called to preach the word of God. And I would dare to say if there was anything that he wants you to know him by is a servant. He's a servant and he's willing to be used by God to preach God's word. And I know he's able and capable. I know he's studied because he's a diligent study of God's word. I just ask that you guys 
open up your ears and open up your hearts to receive the word of God from the man of God. So hear he him as he brings forth the word that can have the ultimate impact in your life. Because it's not him, it's God's word that's going to touch your life. Hear he him as he brings forth the word of life. After the selection from the choir, we will have our own Reverend Demetrius Miller. Praise God.
Oh, come on one time for Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Nothing like the sound of praise. Somebody just made the devil angry because you woke up with a heart of praise. Because praise didn't start when you got into the house of God. Praise started when you opened your eyes. So you ought to glorify him. You ought to magnify him. How many know he's worthy? From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy. Worthy to be praised. Amen. No precious name other than the name of Jesus. I greet you in the name of the Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Um, I bring you greetings from Holy Cross Baptist Church, where my pastor, Reverend Dr. Vincent Edward Stokes Sr., is presiding shepherd and the younger brother of Do Pastor Williams. So that's my uncle, y'all. Amen. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you, my brother. Always just nothing but great love for you. And 45 years coming up for him and his bride of holy matrimony. In the days where couples ain't standing together for 45 days. Y'all watch 90 Days of Marriage. I know what y'all talking about. I know we all watch some of that stuff. But to my good friend, Reverend Williams, Reverend Jackson, I'm sorry. I appreciate you, man. We don't see that much, but when we talk, it's like we saw each other yesterday. Um, I can't believe his son is seven now. Time is flying. And Sister Jackson, Deacon Barber, thank you so much, brother, for all your hospitality and your, your compassionate care with Christ's love. I appreciate you, man. This praise team, let's give them a, a hand of applause for what they do in lifting up God's name. To musicians, get, we had to give both of the drummers some, amen. <laughs> to all of you, Baptist Temple, it's a great place to worship and a beacon of light in this neighborhood. Continue to let your light so shine. And last but not least, um, my granddaughter's here, Riley. She's celebrating Halloween early. And my bride, Deaconessa Tissitania Miller, wave your hand, sis. That's my ride or die right there. Amen. But y'all didn't hear me to come, have me come and talk about her. Um, I have a word that's placed before me, and I pray that you will pray with me because before me is a perfect word, and I am flawed and far from perfect. So pray with me. Pray that these nerves that I have will at least fly in formation. So if you will, I would like to reason with you from God's word. So if you have your swords, unsheathe them at this time. And we're going to look in the 119th Psalm. 119. And we're going to look at, we're going to lift out one verse, verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. Holler amen when you get there. If you're still looking, say hold on. All right. Psalms 119, verse 105. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. We there? Amen. And blessings also to those who are out on the E-Church as well. We never know how far his word will go. Verse 105 says this, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's God's word for God's people. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship, worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that you will move this broken vessel aside. Use me for thy glory, Lord. Let your people hear and see all of you and none of me. 
God, we come to praise you. We come to give you the glory, for you are worthy to be praised. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we do pray and holla, amen. 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 And one more time, amen. amen. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And if I could title this message, it would be, Lord, show me the way. Lord, show me the way. Now, I, I know some folks in here are not, are, are young in age and young in heart, but um, there was a children's game that we used to play called Follow the Leader. Okay, I know it wasn't only one playing it, amen. Thank God for that. <laughs> but in, in this game, those who may not know it, is what you had, to, whoever was leading, you had to follow and do exactly everything that they did. Wherever, where way they went, whether they sat down on the ground, whether they jumped in puddles of water, then you got your new sneaks on, whatever they did, you had to do it. And whoever did not do it and lose, were out of the game. But the one left standing would next become the leader. Kind of sounds like our political parties today. We'll see them every four years. And then we can't get them to come back into the house of worship. I, I say this to you, my friends, because uh, I can't tell you who to vote for, but vote for who is the, doing the right and best thing for you and your family. But my favorite vote and my only vote goes to the Lord. Because regardless of whatever the temperature is in the room, he is still consistent. And he controls the thermostat. So even in that today, we see the, the voices that are being seeking our attention every which way, even to the point now where right is considered wrong and wrong is considered right. We see it's a, more of a Gallup poll of the a majority opinion. What goes for me may not be good for you. So sometimes right is not everything, but the only thing that's acceptable that is right is Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, we are witnessing in the divine prophecy in the pericope where it fulfills right before our very eyes. We see the residing and the last and evil days which are among us right now. Humanity at, at, at its largest continues to spiral downward in a slippery slope of lovelessness, selfishness, bigotry, hatred, envy, jealousy, lack of compassion and sensitivity, and the basics of human life it seem like they're nothing but, a, all, nothing but a bad game or a new game called call to duty. The devastating choices birth the everlasting irreversible consequences. Paul paints the pictures this way to his young protege, Timothy. Time will come when they will endure, not will endure, sound doctrine. But according to their itching ears, because they have heaped up for themselves teachers, and who they are turned away their ears from the truth and turn to fables. They turn to lies. They turn to those things that please them and pads their pockets. We are willing and right now, unfortunately, living on the edge of insanity where pains and panic are commonplace. Paradise has turned into pandemonium. Lawlessness is trading heavy on Wall Street and every street in America. While countless citizens are still refusing to dismount from the mundane medications pushing them to demonic activities. The love of money agenda, where the internal devastation destruction of many refuse to, to get away from the desires of applying and submitting mortgages for those applications in hell. We are experiencing a total degradation and a rush on the ru ruin, total of collapse of society, where Christianity principles that this nation claims that it was founded on are void and obsolete. And they are also trying to crucify again afresh the carpenter. Sadly, society at large is more in control and seeking meology rather than Christology. It's the irrelevancy of Christ, the crucifixion, and the cross, because the cross now is being treated like a hat rack instead of a road to redemption. 
Jesus is not our God, but in some people it's a deranged and wannabe deity. Myth, outdated legend, ancient folklore, a mystical fi uh, fiction figure, an unclaimed and undiscovered archaeological relic, this, hyper hi this hyperbole of an over-exaggerated, Im uh, Im intimidated, and existing man who claims to be 100% God and 100% man. We don't believe him. People are looking in the wrong directions. They're looking at their brands, but they think that they're blessings. Their popularity, but they think they're promises. The need for kneeling down before them is not happening. The Twitter, that's where they trust in. Social likes, but they have no love for Jesus. Humanity does not want a shepherd. They want sin saturated. They're looking, but they're lacking. They're examining, but they're left empty. They're searching scriptures, but stuck in solitary confinement. The refusal of the Redeemer, uh, Solomon says it this way, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end is the way of death. The world is turning, Twitter, and it is flirting and with the doom of disaster because the desires are in the wrong direction. If the church, the body of believers, the ecclesia, the called out ones, does truly desire to take this world and show it the true leader, Jesus Christ, and walk with him in a way that we are supposed to go. There are three things I would like to place before your consideration. His word. Our steps. Choose a choice of direction. His word, our steps, and choose a choice of direction attributed to about 73 books in, the, um, in, in Psalms. King David attributed this 119th Psalm. He read it to his son Solomon as the alphabet. But he also took these words and let him know that Yahweh is all sufficient and expressively righteousness, trustfulness, truthfulness, faithfulness, unchangeability, eternity, purity, and light meaning mankind is ignoring the way for the ways of the world. This total obedience to God is in, and submission to God is something of an ancient relic. Days of past. The Lord is a God of order, not of chaos. So in our first point, his word. Your word is, it says. His word. Thank God it's not my word. Thank God it's not Humanity's word. His word. See that right there, that's a reason to shout right now because I have nothing to do with him blessing any and every one. We, we, we are blessed because of the fact that we are here right now. God, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, the one and only living God, true God, infinite in spirit, who is Jehovah, the maker and supreme ruler of heaven and earth inexpressibly glorious in holiness, worthy of all possible honor, confidence, and love. In a unity, the Godhead, the three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in divine perfection, executing distinct harmonious offices in the great work of redemption. Okay, I just gave someone an article of faith who just was studying. I'm not going to ask Reverend Jackson who, what that is. But we know that this is who God is. But the philosophers stated him as this. He's the uncreated creator, the uncaused cause, the ultimate reality, the unmovable mover, God the, of the oppressed. But we know him as this way. He's a way maker. He's a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom, that bridge over troubled waters, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a heavy load sharer. He's at water when we're thirsty, food when we're hungry, a shelter in our storms, might when we are weary, strength in our weakness, joy in our sadness, light in our darkness, mother to the motherless, father to the fatherless, provisions and even in a pandemic. His word. We know it's his word because we're talking about his word is Jesus Christ. How do we know that? First John tells us this way, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Jesus is the word. From the beginning to the end, he has no ending. 
He has continued to be, he's always have been, and he always will be. The world is looking in the wrong direction. Word of his glory saturates, supplies, that sweet aroma of him lets us know that we are in the right place. See, in the beginning, God created. First verse in Genesis. But he was in here, in the our comprehension of him was not even possible because we weren't here and we couldn't take, consider a thought to describe him. God has always been. Well, you say, well, what was here before God? Nothing. What was God doing? Nothing. How did he get here? He has always been here. But what he did was he took the moon, the stars, and hung them on the lapel of his righteousness. The arc of his omnipotence is that he said and took something and made something out of nothing. And he called that something something else. If that ain't nothing. <laughs> but we see God for who he is. The word. The word is a seed. And we know seeds need to be planted. See, in order for a seed to germinate, it needs water. But we're talking about the living water. That we will never thirst or hunger again for righteousness. Producing the need for nourishment, which is our prayer. Our supplication with thanksgiving. That produces the fruit. Not just any fruit, but the fruit of love, joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Jeremiah said, he, he was, the Lord told him this, he said, The Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said unto me, I have put my word in your mouth. How many know that the Lord is so massive that the universe can't contain him because it's his anyway? In other words, his word is too big for my mouth which means that his word is the very essence of God himself. I can't handle God all by myself. His word, his word, we live. We get strengthened by his word. We walk by his word. We open our eyes by his word. We kept moving, we kept putting that wheel in front of the other wheel by his word. The second point, our steps, lamp to our feet. Now, I want you to know that in the con there are the consequences of life also comes from a lamp. We have illuminated the wrong things. We have shined the light, put a light on it, in the wrong things. We put on the wrong things. We're looking down the wrong corridors of where we're supposed to be. See, at night, everything looks different. Has a, Dr. King would say it has a different hue of gray. Things look different. We try to hide under the confines of cloaked nonconformity. But Christ says, I see as well in the day as I do at night. I see your works. But the lamp is not just for that. Because even in our falling down, because we, 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 when, when James told us to call, you know, count on all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, not if, but when we fall. So we all are going to fall. We all sometimes take our lamps in the wrong places. But even in our falling down, we get back up. Jesus' brother Jude said it this way. He said, I will keep you from falling. But when we fall, we stumble. And when we stumble, we stumble forward. In other words, we're still moving in the right direction. So even when we fall down, God still picks us up and we still keep going. That is what he desires for us to do. It's not that we're supposed to be perfect. Just be obedient and faithful. We keep pressing forward. The fact of the matter is we will never get rid of this sin. Doesn't mean we reside in its all-inclusive resorts. Job reminds that man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Situations will test us and follow us. But guess what? If your faith is not being tested, it's a faith that's not worth trusting. A lamp is useful, but without oil, it has no power. Jesus is that power source. He's that steadfast power source. He's that strengthening power, that praying power, that forgiving power, that barrier-breaking-down power, that believing, that trusting power.
that reconnecting, that regenerating power, that undeniable power. Trust God because he could continue to refuel you over and over and over again. We call them new mercies because yesterday's mercies, mercies are all gone. We wiped them all out. So the fuel for our faithfulness, the logs for our long suffering, the power for our provisions, the electricity to our evangelism, that charge for our compassionate care, that switching on that servanthood, the power that woke us up this morning, that clothed us in our right minds, allowed us safety to get out to the house of worship or to turn on our computers and watch his word. He woke us up. We had nothing to do with it. Somebody's alarm clock is still going off right now. Right now. Because he didn't touch them with that finger of love. A lamp. So promise is a, a providing a light and flame with a purpose. Moses got this instructions from a burning bush. Exodus, the Pharaoh was chasing after God's people, but they were protected by a pillar of fire. The three Hebrew boys, but they found that there was another in the fire. Life in protection. Jesus, light on Mount Figuration, to prove that he was the deity revealed. Jesus baptism. Baptism. The dove came down and Jesus and the father said, this is my son who I am well pleased. God's approval. My feet. Our feet must what match our faith. Deborah witness sometimes we misstep. We trip. Well, we should not to lose focus and focus on our feet. Because sometimes our feet will lead us in the wrong direction. For those who rode, ride motorcycles, you know when, when you lean and you turn your head this way, that's exactly where the motorcycle is going to go. When you drive your car, that's what happens also. When you walk, that's what happens also. We must keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Joshua said, I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm going to go forward. Every day, wake up. Go forward. Let your feet have the purpose of your heart. You lead your feet, not let your feet lead you. So in that, because in, there are pitfalls and potholes, but guess what? Jesus still will provide an off-ramp back to him. Keep your feet out of your own way and let God lead us. Let me say that again. Keep your feet out of your own way because God is trying to take us somewhere. And this third point, choice of direction, light to my path. Light is a decision. The wrong light or the right light. Jesus says the light looks like this. And Matthew says it this way. There's a wide gate and there's a narrow gate. You to wide gate, you can bring all your stuff in. Just keep bringing it in. See, what it is, that's a revolving door. The wide gate is a revolving door. It keeps going around, and they just bring more stuff in, keep going around and around. But the narrow gate is a turnstile. It only goes in one direction. And you can't bring everything in with you when you go through. We got to leave some stuff behind. Peter walked on water. But what happened was when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. He was on that Jonah journey where he couldn't do right because he tried to get away from God. See, it's when we take our eyes off the prize, we don't get the crown. See, when we don't feel God's presence, turn around and see who walked away. He's never leaving us. No sin is too big for him to forgive. No sin is, is so big that he can't reach down and grab you. Grab me. Grab us. Nothing shall ever separate us from his love. True God is that he plants our feet. And I, listen to this. Isaiah said that he's at the end looking to the beginning. We're at the beginning trying to get to the end. God says, where are you trying to go? I've already been there. I got the t-shirt, keychain, and I sent you the postcard. Don't go that way. But there's two lights. Two types of lights. There's a spotlight. Uh -oh. 
and there's a searchlight. Spotlight says this. Look at me. Here I am. Um, let me do my curtain call. Throw the flowers right at me. Let me bow. Put the spotlight on me again. Show me. React to me. Reach me. Listen, I, I'm, never, I'm, I'm about entertainment, but not about spiritual enrichment. My, my brand, my swag, my popularity, my likes, my drip, my celebrity type status, the greatness that I am, I am right for all things. It's, see, it's, it's I and me, not we and ours. It's that new trinity, me, myself, and I, rather than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trust me, because I am all that you will ever need. I am what I am. But Jesus said this, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He didn't say you're hard-headed, we already know you're hard-headed, but not your heart. The searchlight is vast and wide. It's looking for the lost. It says, whosoever. It doesn't care whether you're black, white, rich, poor, straight, gay, don't care. We're in the business of looking for souls, not seeking out and dividing. That's not what it's about. It's not about skins. It's about souls. That great commission is that God told us, go ye therefore in all the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Teaching the things that I have shown you to do. Yeah. But we don't give them pick and choose in there. Because you can't forget about verse 19 where it tells you that all the nations. All nations. Lord is showing me the way. Fine, that was forgotten. Arise from our addictions. Safety from our slave trafficking. Promises over pills. Cleansing from cocaine and crack. Healing from heroin. Hope in the heavenly lamb that would take us away from our sins. God shows us the right path, imitating him. For he, the Lord, is our refuge, our rock, our fortress, our salvation. That strong tower that we can run to, that we can come boldly through the throne of grace, and we may obtain trouble in our time, mercy in our times of trouble. Break the yokes, tear down the strongholds, connect with the heavenly lamb, run, but don't run till you disqualify yourself. My path, my path. Don't follow anybody else's path, but follow God's path. Even when you don't feel like it, follow his path. When the enemy is in your ear, throw it in the towel. You quit, you're worthless, you're unqualified. But guess what? God says you're accepted. You are accepted. Stay the course. Because light shines in darkness, and darkness isn't comprehended. Darkness is what the where the world is, and all it seeks. David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uneasiness, the finality of, fate, uh, of fatality says that there's a summon for the grave for you. Doom and gloom looks over and strikes fear. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Do I have a witness that Jesus is with us in the shadow of death. Do I have a witness that Jesus is with us in the shadow of death? Listen, a shadow cannot cast, be cast without a light. Shadow cannot be cast without a light. So I don't care how dark your situation is, there's a light at the end of your tunnel. There is a light. Jesus is the light of the world. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he will hold up, the spirit of the Lord will hold up a standard against him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed, fashioned, created, crafted, shall ever prosper against you. Fret not for the evildoers, because they will one day be cut off. Stay the course. Keep your hand in the Father's hands. I don't care if the door, I don't care if you sitting there and you're like, listen, God, I can't see the first step in the entire staircase. Walk anyway. If the door's closed in your face, just praise him in the hallway. Keep on, because he'll open doors that no man can close, and close doors that no man can open. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. He is our way maker. He makes the impossible possible. Weakness turns into worship. Wanting and get, to give up causes us to press towards the mark. Emptiness, and overflowing love. Storms, we get stability. Calamities, we get calm. Worrying turns into our continuous praise. And the trials and tribulations, we can trust in the Trinity. He telling us right now, I want you to know right now, I don't care how bad your situation looks, how dim and dark it is. At 11.59, he can step between your 11.59 and your midnight and see peace be still. We have that endurance. We have that sustaining power, the saving grace from our Lord and Savior. Strength in our suffering. Prevail in our persecutions. Glory in our grief. Blessings in bitterness. Anointing in our anger. Set free from stress. And we, the tranquilities of turmoil are no more because we have triumphant. Light of hope, healing, restoration, jubilation, transfiguration, and his divine promises. Lord, show us the way. The way. Show us the way. The way, the way was made plain by a name. Not just any name, but a name. A name where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every knee, the white knee, the black knee, every knee, the rich knee, the poor knee, every knee, the broken knee, the manufactured knee, every knee, the stumbling knee. The straightforward knee. Every knee. Every knee. Every knee. That name is Mary's baby. That diadem of beauty. The Lord our righteousness. Jesus came to show us the way. The pathway of 40 and two generations. Jesus accused, abused, and alienated. Jesus taunted, talked about, and teased. Jesus lacerated, lied on, and, and lynched. Jesus spit on, slapped, and sucker punched. Jesus spoke no word. Jesus picked up a cross, carried a cross, nailed to a cross, bled from a cross, suffered from a cross, died from a cross. He hung his head, placed him in a borrowed tomb, borrowed it because he was going to give it back to its owner. Because on that third day, he put one hand on time, one hand on eternity, and said, all power, all power is in my hand. Because he rose, because he lives, I can face another day. Jesus, our bright and morning star, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean, holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the holy rock I stand. On Christ, not on my job. Not on my education, but on Christ. Not on my car, not on the square footage of my house, but on Christ. Not on my friends, not on my position, but on Christ. On Christ, on Christ, the lily of the valley. On Christ, won't you lift him? Won't you praise him? Won't you glorify him? On Christ, won't you lift him? For he's worthy to be praised. All oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. All oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Lift him up. Give him glory in the name. He is able to keep you, to keep me from us, from falling, from tripping, from sliding, from stumbling before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. 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 Power, lift him. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He will. Won't he? He will. He will. Trust him, but follow his way.
Hallelujah. Lord, show me the way. And he only took one verse. And he brought about that word with so much power and so much conviction about our Lord that who we should turn to the power source of our of our existence but sometimes somehow we get unplugged leaving us without any power without any hope so those that feel that they've been unplugged I ask in the name of Jesus that you plug yourself back in to your power source so that God can be the blessing that he is. I want to thank Reverend Miller, amen, for the powerful message. Praise God. God has used him. I would like to take this opportunity while you guys are standing and I want to offer a relationship with Christ to you. I want to offer you fellowship. I want to offer you an experience that maybe you have never had before. Being in the midst of Christ I offer a relationship, discipleship, and I can't take for granted that everyone in the sanctuary is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That because Jesus did what he did, we have access to the kingdom of heaven so that death cannot take you under that victory is on your side. So I extend this opportunity to give your love to Christ. We here at the Baptist Temple Church, we love the Lord. We're a Bible preaching and a Bible teaching church. So I extend this offer to you. Is there anyone here that would like to step out on faith and give their life to Christ right now. We have deacons right here waiting to welcome you and to walk you through the process. Is there anyone here? Here's another offer for you. Perhaps you know Christ in the pardon of your sin. Maybe, just maybe, you drifted away from Christ and you want to reunite with your Lord and Savior that you're looking for a church home to fellowship with. I ask that you step out in the name of Jesus. All those that want um, altar call prayer, please come forward. Amen. All those that want family prayer, please come forward.
Hallelujah. Come on, come before the altar. Hallelujah. Maybe you might not be coming for you, but you might be coming for someone else. Someone needs your prayers. Precious and eternal Father, we are gathered here at your altar, Lord God, in worship, Lord God. The Lord God, trouble, Lord God, is sometimes in the room, Lord God. Sometimes, Lord God, circumstances are standing right beside us, Lord God. Lord God, situations, Lord God, are in back of us, Lord God. And sometimes, Lord God, it sounds like we're surrounded by enemies, but Lord God, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Because Lord God, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or even think that Lord God, you said that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Father God, we humble ourselves before you, Lord God. But even our situations cannot stand up to you, Father God. Father God, we are leaning on your strength, Lord God, because your stripes, that's why we're healed, Father God. Father God, we're going through situation to situation, Lord God, and sometimes, Lord God, we get beat up, Lord God, but Lord God, give us, Lord God, what we need in those times of despair, Lord God. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that some of us have come into the sanctuary that is broken. Lord God, we ask that you piece us back together. Father God, some of us are dealing with debt situations, Lord God. There is no problem that you can't solve, Lord God. Lord God, every battle that you come up against, Lord God, you have won, Lord God. So, Father God, we trust you, Lord Jesus. Your resume, Lord God, says enough, Lord God, that you're able, Lord God, to combine all our circumstances, Lord God. And, Lord God, you can pour down blessings like no other, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be patient with you, Lord God, just like you're patient with us, Lord God. Lord God, give us praise through our circumstances, Lord God. Give us praise through our troubles and our struggles, Lord God. Lord God, give us praise, Lord God. And when we're down and when we're up, Lord God, there is none like you, Father God. So, Lord God, we are honored, Lord God, to become before, Lord God, your altar, Lord God. Knowing, Lord God, that you are here with us. That even, Lord God, things don't always go in our favor. But we know all things work together for the good of those that love God and called according to his purpose. So that even though we're going through the storms, Father God, that it have purpose, Lord God, that on the other side of trouble, Lord God, you will meet us, Lord God, Lord God. Lord God, you walked us through, Lord God, and the blessing on the other side, Lord God, is understanding you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for working things out, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We bless your holy and righteous name, Lord God. You are the light to our path, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do, Lord God. Father God, we honor you, Lord God. We praise your holy and righteous name, Lord God. Lord God, even though the enemy may come in like a flood, Lord God, you hold up a standard, Lord God, that the devil, Lord God, has to jump into the sea, Lord God. That the name of Jesus, Lord God, demons tremble, Lord God. Situations flee, Lord God. That we are able, Lord God, to stomp on the devil's head, Lord God. Lord God, give us a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. We honor you. We worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. I have a couple of announcements. Um, someone has left um, their uh, remote to their vehicle. It's a Nissan. They left this in the female bathroom. So I have it here up front. Another um, announcement is that I want to remind all the women to stay after church, the Baptist temple to stay after the church. Amen. And lastly, I want to um, I want to let everyone know that on every second and fourth, is it second and fourth Sunday that we are going to start? Uh, matter of fact, no, we're going to start service earlier. Amen. We're going to start service early. What times? 9.50, amen. I just want to announce that. We're going to start church at 9.50, amen. Amen. Everybody got that? Put that in your Rolodex. Put that in your phone. Do whatever you got to do. Amen. Because I don't want nobody to show up halfway through the service and say, uh, uh, all right? And praise God. Amen. Those are my announcements at this time. I'm going to pass this over to Reverend Miller, amen, to close this out. Amen. Young Master Jackson, he ain't playing over there. It's a bad man right there. Keep practicing. You never know how far God's going to take you. Keep practicing. Stay at it. Riley, that's to you too. Keep on that violin, young lady. Amen. And all of us continue to encourage our children. Amen. Amen. They're going to keep this moving long as we're gone. They're going to keep this going. And you never know amongst us who might be another preacher, an evangelist who will open his mouth or her mouth and lead a thousand people to, to Christ. We don't know. But we encourage them because the world wants to discourage them. I thank you, Baptist Temple, for putting up with me. I appreciate you. I love you. It's a great being back here. He gets the glory. He gets the praise. He gets it. I still don't know why he called me, but I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your love. That I don't see that he sees, and I thank God I don't see it, because I never want to be one of those pious peacocks out there. I just want to be me. So, please, I, I pray right now that all of you will be safe, uh, continue to move towards being a blessing to those don't sit on your testimony. Please don't sit on your testimony. You may be the only Christ that someone sees. You may meet somebody in the church one day. You say, oh, come on in the Baptist temple. And they come in. And they say, let me see who this Jesus is because I was thinking about killing myself today. And they find out. Because we don't know what people are thinking. We don't know. Especially our youth. Especially our youth. The suicide rate is crazy. I don't even take up one year of time, but that's, that's serious business. I look at these young ones over here, and that, and that tugs my heart, that no one was there for them to make sure that they're okay. So let us, let us be diligent and keep our arms open, but most importantly, our hearts open. Um, again, let us, um, let's look to the Lord. Gracious eternal Father, Lord, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our blessed hearts have felt. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, showing us the way, helping us, Lord, to be better than we were today than our yesterdays. God, right now we ask that uh, you will continue to so go with us and stand by us. Lord, we're about to walk some dangerous streets and travel some dangerous roads. We ask, Lord, that you will put a hedge of protection around us, Lord. Allow us to get to our destination safe and sound under thy protective care. And once we get there, Lord, we know that you'll be there waiting for us. And Lord, Lord, we pray that your place, that where we have to meet you at, is better than when we left it. God, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you. Now unto him, who is able to keep us from falling and pre present us faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let the saints of God say amen. 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 amen.